Hey guys, there are so many options in Azure to deploy containers. So which option do we use? Which service do we deploy to? We're going to have a look at a few options, especially the ones that I hear a lot of um, the questions about the comparisons. So let's take a look. There are three services that often come up in question, and those are container instances, uh, Kubernetes service, and then the newer one, container apps. So which one do we use for what? So what I've done is I've got a little slider at the top here. And on the left, we we go towards simplicity and the, the, the container as a service style um, deployment. And on the right, we've got the fuller orchestration, higher control, uh, microservice um, and scaling setup. So if we look at container instances or ACI, you'll see that that really fits far left. So uh, the reason why is that you're literally saying, here's a container, run it for me. That's all you can do. Um, you can only run one instance. You don't worry about the infrastructure, so it's really easy to deploy. It's really quick to get up and running. But that's about all you can do. It's quick to get up and running. You can't scale it. You can't do much more with it. So use cases are often... Um, difficult to justify in production um, you because you can only run one instance you quickly run into a scenario where it, this doesn't make sense anymore but um, there are great use cases for for instance testing or ad hoc use cases or maybe you're creating a pr and you quickly want to just deploy something somewhere um, fire up a container and somebody can check up um, what the code does or the, the newly built package before actually approving it and merging it into master or your trunk branch or something. That's an uh, use case. And, and there's also in Kubernetes services, it also gets used. So it's, it's, although I haven't found real production use cases for this, it's still a, a useful service. Looking at the far right, we've got the polar opposite. We've got um, Azure Kubernetes services or AKS. And um, this is, uh, compared to container instances, it's geared towards uh, full orchestration, high control, scaling, and those kind of things. I mean, the, all those limitations I mentioned about co container instances, you don't have. Um, but with it also comes the overhead of um, operational costs. Somebody needs to manage your cluster, as well as uh, if you're new to Kubernetes, it's a steep learning curve. Now you can obviously see there's a little bit of a gap here. We've got the extreme easy, simple, um, and then the extreme complex and uh, full control. And there's a bit of a service missing, or there was for, for some time. And uh, until recently, they've uh, Microsoft's deployed a um, container apps. And container apps is still in that category of container as a service, although it runs on top of a Kubernetes cluster. So even though you don't speak Kubernetes to it. You can't do a kube control and you don't have the, the full control and orchestration of Kubernetes. You don't even know, need to know Kubernetes. Underlying, it runs on a Kubernetes cluster, which is managed for you. And what that means is you can scale either with a little slider where you run it up and down and say how many instances you want, but you also get the full key to scalers that you would expect in Kubernetes, just in container apps. Uh, while Kubernetes, you're really focusing on how to deploy it. Container apps is still that container of a service where you, you're essentially focusing on what to deploy. So you're saying, here are my services, here are my containers, run them for me. You don't care about the infrastructure, yet you get control of scaling. You don't care about, um, you know, how how is this thing being deployed, but you still have the service discovery that you would expect within Kubernetes where multiple services can uh, talk to each other within the cluster. You've got your, your public and your um, ingress and even your internal, which if you compare them to things like uh, in Kubernetes, your cluster IP and your load balancer. So this is a really, really neat um, service that fills that gap. Because if you are just looking for a service that scales, where you run multiple services that need to coordinate with each other, some are internal, some are external, and you don't want to go full-blown Kubernetes, this is perfect for you.
I almost want to say, unless you've already got a Kubernetes cluster um, on-prem that you'd like to port to the cloud, your first, um, your first go-to thing should be, let's go for container apps. Because if you're just looking for scale and service discovery and, and microservices, um, then this is the one you're looking for. It is worth noting that Kubernetes service um, is, does scale a lot more at the moment. And I'm hoping to see this change because container apps um, is currently in GA and it can scale to 30 instances, which if you think about I mean, it being load balanced across 30 um, containers you're running, it, it's a fair amount of scale. If you're looking for something far greater than that, then at the moment you're limited in container apps and Kubernetes would be the option to go for. Now, these three are the main ones I've often hear the questions about, but they're not the only services um, in Azure that, that you can de deploy containers to. So a couple of other noteworthy mentions uh, are for me um, app services, um, sometimes referred to as uh, web apps for containers. Um, all it really is, is your app service, um, whatever you use to there within app service, um, you know, you've still got your, your deployment slots, you've got your, your little um, auto scale sliders and those kind of things. Um, and, um, but you, ins instead of deploying your actual files or code files or published files, you deploy a container. Um, this is a nice little option if you're already going to um, deploying to app service, for instance, or, and you're making that transition over to a web service um, deployment using a container instead of just the, uh, publishing the files. Um, you can still use your app service features without uh, making that shift. Now we've also got um, images for the function app and you, it's not an, actually a container that gets created for every function in the function app. Uh, that's not the case, but it's it's essentially taking the entire function app, wrapping it in a um, in an image, and that gives you some flexibility to say, um, no, I don't just want to run it um, managed in Azure, but I actually want to run it on-prem, for instance, or maybe I'd like to run it in a different cloud. So it gives you some flexibility to um, not be bound. Um, so that that is a nice uh, little. Um, way of deploying it in different areas. Um, I wouldn't go down this route though if you're creating a new application. If it's an API style application, rather go for something that's less um, di directly focused on function app, for instance, because um, maybe just a, a regular API and um, then you can you have a lot more options. You can deploy it to, to, I mean, to app service, to Kubernetes services, to container instances, to container apps, to anything where um, function app is very specific. You've written the functions, but you'd like to package it now. And lastly, a, a mention of batch services. Now, this is a, a, the personal one I've just added in there. I know it's not um, the most popular service and in my opinion, a little bit underrated, um, but you can create, create a container um, for a background job that starts up, does something, some processing, and then exits. And batch service is perfect for that, where you can um, start up many, many, many um, instances or queue them, and it'll start up your image with certain parameters, and then once it's done, exit. And the scaling on this is pretty big. So it's a nice alternative to if you were going down the route of using a Kubernetes cluster to run uh, background uh, jobs, um, for especially at scale. Um, there is another option and this is it.